What's up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Security Plus 601 certification. So let's get into it. In this video, you're going to learn about password attacks and physical attacks, such as spraying attacks, dictionary attacks, brute force attacks, rainbow tables, plain text unencrypted attacks, malicious USB cables, malicious flash drives, card cloning, and skimming. Let's talk about spraying. So password spraying is an attack that attempts to access a large number of accounts or usernames with a few commonly used passwords. Traditional brute force attacks attempt to gain unauthorized access to a single account by guessing the password. This can quickly result in the targeted account getting locked out as commonly used account lockout policies allow for a limited number of failed attempts, typically three to five during a set period of time. During a password spray attack, which is also known Known as the low and slow method, the malicious actor attempts a single commonly used password such as password one against many accounts before moving on to attempt a second password and so on. This technique allows the actor to remain undetected by avoiding rapid or frequent account lockouts. Password spray campaigns typically target single sign-on and cloud-based applications utilizing federated authentication protocols. Targeted federated authentication can help mask malicious traffic Additionally, targeting SSO applications helps maximize access to intellectual property if the attacker succeeds. Next, we have a dictionary attack, and this is a form of a brute force attack technique for defeating a cipher or authentication mechanism by trying to determine its decryption key or passphrase by trying thousands or millions of likely possibilities, such as words in a dictionary or previously used passwords authored from lists obtained from past security breaches. Dictionary attacks can be prevented by locking systems after a specified number of incorrect passwords are offered and by requiring sophisticated passwords that do not include identifiable information such as birthdays, family names, etc. Next is brute force. So a brute force attack consists of an attacker submitting many passwords or passphrases with the hope of eventually guessing a combination correctly. The attacker systematically checks all possible passwords and passphrases until the correct one is found. System and network administrators setting up password rules that require a system to lock after a specified number of incorrect passwords or input is one way to prevent a brute force attack. Longer passwords also aid in the fight against brute brute force attacks. And we got two types of brute force attacks. The first one is offline. This is where the attacker has access to the encrypted material or a password hash and tries different keys without the risk of discovery or interference. And then we have an online brute force attack. And this is when the attacker needs to interact with a targeted system by trying to guess the username and password at the login interface. Next, we have a rainbow table. So a rainbow table, this is a hash function used in cryptography for storing important data such as passwords in a database. A rainbow table attack, which is similar to a brute force attack, except more mathematically sophisticated and takes less time. This is a type of hacking wherein the perpetrator tries to use a rainbow hash table to crack the passwords that are stored in the database. Next, we have plain text and unencrypted attacks. So a plain text unencrypted attack is where the attacker has knowledge of the plain text and the corresponding cipher text. This information is used to decrypt the rest of the cipher text. With a chosen plain text attack, the attacker can get a plain text message of their choice encrypted with the target's key and has access to the resulting cipher text. This information is used to derive the encryption key. This type of attack is against public key crypto systems where the attack attacker has access to the public key with an adaptive chosen plain text attack, which is similar to a chosen plain text attack. The attacker can get several plain text messages of choice encrypted with the target's key. All right, let's talk about physical attacks. And the first one is a malicious USB cable. So a malicious USB cable can be used to compromise systems. Different USB cables are designed to infect connected devices with malware. These malicious USB cables work by injecting keystrokes 
networks onto the victim system when plugged into a USB capable device. Malicious USB cables can take control of a user's cell phone, laptop, or desktop. Usernames and passwords are the first bits to go. Next, the connected device's storage is empty. Next, the preloaded penetration tool springs into action and the connection is used as a pivot point to attack other machines and databases on the network. All of this is controlled remotely by an outside attack via Wi-Fi to the internet or by a nearby smartphone. Next is a malicious flash drive. So malware can be transferred to a computer by way of removable media, especially USB malicious flash drives. So for example, an attacker could install a Trojan or ransomware by using a malicious flash drive if he or she has physical access to the targeted system. Alternatively, the attacker could place the USB flash drive somewhere and use some aspects of social engineering to fool the user into inserting it into his or her system to get it infected. And then we have card cloning and skimming. So card cloning attacks, they can be used to clone credit cards, smartphones, SIM cards, and even access badges that are used to gain access to a building. From the perspective of the attackers, skimming can be a very effective way to obtain credit card information because it does not require the physical credit card to be stolen. Instead, they simply use an electronic device to covertly scan the card's information and copy it into the device's memory. The thieves can then access that information digitally or else download the information onto a separate card that is already in their possession. Thieves can execute skimming attacks whenever a cardholder opts for electronic payment methods in a physical location. All right, so that was my quick little class on password attacks and physical attacks. So let's do some of this wonderful check on learning. So the first question is, a short list of commonly used passwords tried against a large number of user accounts is a characteristic feature of what? Would this be a brute force attack, a dictionary attack, a spraying attack, or a rainbow table attack? So a short list of commonly used passwords tried against a large number of user accounts, this would be what? And the correct answer, is this would be a spraying attack next question which password attack takes advantage of a predefined list of words? Would this be a brute force attack, dictionary attack, spraying attack, or a rainbow table attack? So which one of these takes advantage of a predefined list of words? And the correct answer is, this would be a dictionary attack. Next question. An attack against encrypted data that relies heavily on computing power to check all possible keys and passwords until the correct one is found is no Known as what? Would this be a brute force attack, dictionary attack, spraying attack, or a rainbow table attack? So an attack against an encrypted data that relies heavily on computing power to check all the possible keys and passwords. This will be known as what? And the correct answer is this would be a brute force attack. All right, so that was my quick little class on password attacks and physical attacks where we talked about spraying attacks, dictionary attacks, brute force attacks, rainbow tables, plain text unencrypted attacks, malicious USB cables, malicious flash drives, card cloning, and skimming. Now, if you felt like you've gotten something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also, go check out my website, Tech technology G so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Security Plus 601 certification exam. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.